Hey, superstars. It's your best friend, Scott, and I'm here with my best friend, Jason, who uh, we just hung out in Strongsville a couple weeks ago, and we had a good time. And Jason's kind of newer to YouTube, so uh, why don't you introduce yourself, Jason? Hey, everybody. How you doing? My name is Jason, and my channel is The Everyday Card Collector. Uh, as Scott mentioned, we met in Strongsville, but I've been following him for quite some time now, him and, him and a few other channels I've been following, so I got to meet all of those people at Strongsville. Um, and you've been I, on quite a few live streams, too. Yeah, yeah. I kind of I kind of bop around and, and, and try and put myself out there. I was what uh, most YouTubers consider a lurker for, mm -hmm. for about a year, year and a half. And then finally took the plunge. So I felt like I knew some of the people already. So it was a little easier for me. And then I met a few at the National last year and kind of grew since then and started my channel. Uh, actually, it was Christmas Day of 2023 was my first video. So it's nice. been a couple months, four or five months. That's awesome. And how's it going so far? Oh, it's going great. You know what? It, it's uh, enhanced the collecting. That's how I look at it. Absolutely. Um, on, you know, the viewers and, you know, obviously I'd love to get as many viewers as I can and grow the channel. But the reality is who I've met throughout the uh, journey so far, it's been fantastic. And the people mm -hmm. I've got to interact with, that's the fun part of it. So um, since you have started your YouTube channel, how was like meeting YouTubers in Strongsville compared to the national? So it, it was slightly different because at the national, I was still a lurker at that point in time. So maybe a little timid to approach people. Mm -hmm. um, I did meet quite a few, but very brief. Uh, Mike Moynihan from uh, Baseball Collector, uh, Sammy Thunder, Iconic Al. These are multiple channels that I follow and you're familiar with, Scott, as I'm sure most of the viewers are. Um, I, th I think you were there last year and I don't think we met. Were you at the national last year? I was at the national. Yeah, I don't think we met. Um, so uh, again, I was a little, you know, more apprehensive and precautious because who knew me? I was a guy, I was a guy typing on your channel. Um, <laughs> so then shortly thereafter doing this, starting my channel and, uh, interacting with these people, you kind of just having your face out there, they can put a name to the face and, and it's a little easier to get to know everybody. So I was bopping around at Strongsville with everybody. So, you know, right. it was a lot of fun. We had a blast. So I remember the first um, YouTube meeting after I had started my channel um, at the uh, national that I went to. And like, that was sort of mind blowing experience. Like this is, this is real now. These, these people are real. And it was, right. it was really neat. It, it kind of blows my mind. I, I, I've told the story maybe a couple of times on some lives. I don't know if I've even told it on my channel. Uh, going to the national last year's national being in Chicago or just outside of Chicago it's where I live. It's very close to where I live, kind of like mm -hmm. what you're dealing with this year. Right. Um, so I pulled up and as I was pulling up uh, to park, I saw Sammy Thunder and I wanted to yell out the window, hey, Sammy, how's it going? But he had no idea who I was, <laughs> had no idea, and never saw mm -hmm. me in his life. And I'm thinking, I can't, this guy's going to think I'm nuts. I can't just say hello. So I introduced myself at the meet and greet that we had that evening. So Sammy's awesome, though. He, yeah. He would have taken his stride. Great guy. Uh, I like your shirt. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you. that. I, that was the Strongsville purchase, as you very well know. Um, I have since uh, introduced my wife to your Etsy page and uh, told her all the things that I can get for my birthday and Christmas now. <laughs> so she's aware of that as well. Oh, nice. <laughs> Appreciate that. Okay. So um, I brought you on today. Um, I've done this a couple of times with a couple other YouTubers, and it was like a really fun experiment. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to create the best lineup possible out of our favorite teams. So you're a White Sox guy and I'm a Cleveland Indians Guardians guy. And um, so the rules are the players have to have played for both teams. And uh, actually it's going to be a pretty, pretty good lineup. Yeah, I, uh, this was a ton of fun. Um, you know, first and foremost, my White Sox are the worst team in Major League Baseball right now. So mm -hmm. actually making a fictitious lineup is probably perfect for me to get away from the real team that's playing right now. I can't even handle it. Um, but going through this, um, I'm not a stats guy. I'm not a guy who really digs into the meat and potatoes of stats. Mm -hmm. But being able to use baseball reference and things of that nature to find these players there were a ton of players that I didn't even know played on both of these teams. Right. Um, so I've got honorable mentions in my head and I was toying with who should I put here and who should I put there? And it's, it was a lot of fun. So I, I jotted some notes down. I've got all my cards out. And one of the rules, correct me if I'm wrong, if you already mentioned it, I apologize, was you have to have a card of the player, correct? Right. 
Yeah, so so it was a lot of fun. And then uh, now I've also discovered I need to buy some more cards. So there are some <laughs> players that I don't that I don't have that I that I want. So, but right. uh, yeah, I'll let you uh, let you kick it off, Scott. So I did this a couple years ago. I did it with Four Leaf, and we did the um, Indians and Red Sox, and that was a pretty pretty killer lineup. And we I did this with uh, James from Elite Hunters, and with the Indians and Yankees, which kind of hurt me a little bit yeah um but also a very very good lineup um and i'll admit i am i historically am not a white Sox fan at all sure Um, but but going through this i think was a little like maybe therapeutic for me like it it made me realize more so that um our, our our teams have a lot more in common and i shouldn't I shouldn't hate on the White Sox as much as I have. It's it's okay for you to do that. And the reality is, in recent times, uh, your team has been beating up on mine. So so it it shouldn't even be a hate. It should be you should feel sorry for us. That's more than anything. <laughs> there, there is a little bit of that this year. <laughs> right, right. Um, uh, so in honor of you, I'm going to wear a White Sox hat, which fantastic. I, I don't don't normally do. So hold on one second. Oh, that's beautiful. Do we have the cross through? Or is it X'd out, may I ask? No. <laughs> oh no, it's a it's a play, it's a silhouette. Fantastic. Mm-hmm. From a distance, it looks like it was X'd out. I'm like, wait, what? <laughs> no, oh, that's, very, that, that's very cool. Very cool. Uh, um this was at a this was a stadium giveaway. Um I went with a bunch of YouTubers at the National last year. Um they were playing the Guardians. Right. So um and then they lost. But I got I got a hat that I've never worn until today. So what'd you think of the park? Um, I've been there quite a few times. Um, okay. It's, it's adequate. It's not as bad as some people say it is. It's not the greatest park, but correct. Um, it's, it's fun. It's a baseball game and yeah. there's a lot worse places to be. Sure. It's tough competing with the crosstown Wrigley field, iconic, mm-hmm. historic. It's real difficult. That is the team in Chicago. Um, uh, we are the second team and we are the second class citizens as far as White Sox fans go. And right. it's happening this year because the Cubs are young and pretty good and they're fun to watch. So, but we, we deal with it. We deal with it. Yep. Okay. So shall we start with our, um, pitching staff? Yeah. Are we going to, should I go, uh, we're going five pitchers and a reliever, correct? Correct. And, uh, should I show all my first five and then you show yours? Yeah, let's do the first five and then. All right, we'll perfect. After that. So I kind of went a uh, lefty right righty combo. So I wanted to go lefty righty lefty righty for my first four, and then my mm-hmm. fifth starter is actually a righty as well. So uh, uh, my first, my number one pitcher is going to be, and he's not in either uniform, but played for both teams. It's going to be Steve Carlton. Nice. Uh, actual, you know, just a beast of a left-hander. Three hundred and twenty-nine wins, three point two two ERA. Uh, his WAR is above ninety, and a Hall of Famer. So how do you go wrong with starting off your lineup with that? Right. Um, second, I went with uh, a guy I have quite a few cards of. Uh, this is his first White Sox card, and that's early win. Again, another Hall of Famer, uh, 300 wins, uh, like a three and a half ERA, and roughly 61 more, I believe. So that's his 58, and then I sh- I've got a couple. I've also showed his 59, which I actually picked up in Strongville when we met. So figured nice. I'd show that. Uh, number three, I think those are pretty. I think our pitchers are going to be somewhat similar until we probably get to four or five would be my guess. Maybe three will be different. Number three is uh, Tommy John. And I had to hunt and peck for a Tommy John card. Doing my research, I wanted him in my lineup, wanted him as one of my pitchers, and I could not find a card. And I dug up my 84 set and found this, so... Towards the end of his career, obviously, uh, not in the Hall of Fame. Most people who are statisticians or are fans of baseball believe he, be, he belongs there. Uh, 288 wins, uh, 3.3 ERA, and, a, and again, 61 war. So very similar to early win, who's in the Hall. So that's my 84 tops, Tommy John. Okay. Then uh, here's where I kind of got shaky. So I And there were a couple of guys I was thinking of, but... Uh, Bartolo Colon's my fourth starter. Uh, again, had a dig for cards. Uh, this is the 2001 Tops. This is the uh, home team advantage set, which was a full set. Uh, there's a standard set and a home team advantage. 
I purchased the home team advantage years ago. So that's the little emblem on this side here. Um, but again, guy pitched forever, big guy, you know, how does, I'm a big guy. So I love the big guys. Exactly. <laughs> you know, he's an above, above a four ERA. I think he had like 240 plus wins, uh, and roughly 45 or 46 war, but, uh, a pitcher who pitched for a lot of teams and pitched for a long time. And then my final fifth guy, this is where I think we'll differ. This guy probably harkens back to memories of me being younger, Black Jack McDowell. Uh, so this is the, uh, I believe this is my 93 leaf of Black Jack. Uh, stats weren't tremendous. I had a, had a, you know, had a decent career, 3.8 ERA, 127 wins. Uh, I think he was a three-time All-Star. But uh, a lot of people, he's probably forgotten. He's only got a 27 more. Um, but that's my 93, uh, I'm sorry, that's the 93 Leaf, and then I believe this is the 94 Pinnacle or vice versa. And he was a Cy Young Award winner here, which it says right here on this card. So, yeah, he was pretty awesome. Yeah, I, I like him a lot, and it harkens back to the day for me. So those are my five starters. Let's see what you have and if how close we are. All right, I think we're going to be pretty close here. So number one, Mr. Carlton. Yes. <laughs> Very brief, briefly paid, played for both teams, right? Yes, I almost pulled the 87 tops because Number I knew two. It was, he was on that team. Early win. There's Mr. Early Win. Perfect. That's, yep. that's a beautiful card. Thank you. I like that card. Yeah, it's gorgeous. Number three. Mr. Tommy oh, John. We are right in line. <laughs> and we did not talk about this, folks. <laughs> that's that's how it works though right all right number four here's where we start to veer off a little bit we've got mike garcia okay i i saw i was looking at mike as well so um mike was like the number four in the big four in the 50s so you had okay um bob feller bob lemon early win and Mike Garcia was the fourth guy, but and he was awesome and just kind of overlooked because you got three Hall of Famers in that rotation. Um, but really, really good pitcher too. I overlooked him because now had now knowing that I would have probably picked him. So <laughs> and then number five is kind of a career that that could have been is Herb Score. Yes. Absolutely. So he was supposed to be like a left-handed Bob Feller. Um but he got hit in the face with a line drive and his career kind of derailed after that. But he was an um, outstanding pitcher as a rookie. He won the Rookie of the Year and uh, just kind of tailed off after getting smashed in the face there. Right. He was actually one of my honorable mentions, and I don't have one of his cards. So there are players that I might have written down like, oh, I was thinking about him and simply don't have the card. Dick Donovan was another one. Mm -hmm. um, believe it or not, uh, I put on the list. And this was even before I started to do the research. I had, I had uh, Mike Clevenger, <laughs> the current pitcher, on the list as well. I'm like, well, he might be, he might be worth talking about. He, so. he was one of my guys too. When yeah, yeah. So now, now we're doing reliever, correct? Now we're doing a reliever. All right. So I think I have a hunch we're going to be in the same boat here. <laughs> uh, um, mine is this is 1968 Hoyt Wilhelm. Um, absolute stud hall of famer that's his 68 and then this is his 64 which i believe is his first topped card issued as a white sock um you know uh, 143 wins two and a half 2.5 era roughly uh 228 saves eight time all-star and a hall of famer so that to me that was just that was a no-brainer all right um I, actually i don't think you'll be surprised by this but here's my guy yeah, so I saw it instantly, and I th I don't have one of his cards, Scott. I don't have a Don Mossy. I'm like, holy cow, I need to get one of these. So You do. That, Everybody needs Don Mossy. Yes, that is an absolute uh, – I knew that was popping up. That was a no-brainer, right? I had, to, I had to believe that was happening. So he had, he had – um, he only had 50 saves in his career, and his ERA was 343, so not quite as good as Hoyt. Um, and I do have some Hoyt cards, but uh, you know, I got to go with my guy. Right. Um, I think my honorable mention was if it wasn't Hoyt, it, it would have been Roberto Hernandez. Yes, saw that too. So he's, was, he had 326 saves, I think. 
and I should have pulled his card. Some of the honorable mentions I pulled and some of them I didn't. Mm -hmm. um, I think I'm not quite as organized as you. So, like, I have cards everywhere. And I'm like, all right, I got to <laughs> dig up a Roberto Hernandez card here. How is this going to happen? So I tried to dig up uh, players that I could, you know, most of the players on this list, like you said, I think the lineup's going to be pretty strong. So some of my picks are sentimental. Uh, mm -hmm. as your guy was so we'll we'll see as we as we move forward here i think uh, we're going catcher next we're going catcher next all right that might be a little bit of a sentimental pick for me uh, i think i know who it is then yes you know who it is so it is here's my 1953 top sherm lawler um and i've got a couple cards to represent him as well i figured i'd take a few out so here's my 54 which i got at strongsville nice uh, and then here's my my 59, and I, I've come to the conclusion that I probably have to do a run of his because I have most of his cards. Um, 264 batting average, two, uh, 264 batting average, uh, nine-time All-Star, three-time Gold Glove, uh, WAR just above 30, which isn't great. And if I'm not mistaken, I didn't see this in doing my research, but I believe he was the first American League Gold Glove winner at catcher. And I don't quote me on that. I don't know. I just thought I heard that at some point in time. So, but uh, you know, part of part of my uh, part of my sentimental pick, if you will. Okay. Um, mine's a little sentimental too. It's not Sherm Lawler. Um, it's a Rookie of the Year, Gold Glove winner, six-time All Star, um, All Star Game MVP. It'd be Mr. Sandy yes. Alomar. Yes, yes, yes. He was on my honorable mention, and then. He was one, and uh, Tony Pena was another one I was looking at. Those were yeah. from in that particular position. Another excellent career. Yeah, yeah, but you can't go wrong. And and it cracks me up because there were some positions that were just to me no brainers, and I didn't even look for an alternative. Catcher mm -hmm. was one where I could see two or three guys getting picked easily. Again, sentimental from my side of things. So, but it was still fun. Right. Um, all right. So uh, you're you up next. Face. You're me or you? Me? Um, I'll go. Yeah. Go ahead. Okay, so um, I had two guys I was looking at. So my honorable mention was going to be Hal Trotsky. Oh, beautiful. 41 play ball. 41 play ball. He was overlooked as a first baseman in the uh, 30s and 40s because there were so many like Hall of Fame first basemen. But he was a masher. Um, but uh, Mr. Mr. Tomey here, he had a, a better career. Hall of Famer, obviously. And uh, iconic player. I'm going to say that because that'll make Al mad. Because <laughs> <laughs> you didn't hit the list. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, I'm going to keep the theme then. Uh, it's hard not to pick him. Uh, this was my, this is a, I believe, I think it's, uh, I had to write some of these down because I haven't looked at these in so long. I've got it written down here. I think this was a Skybox medal. So mm -hmm. Kind of a cool card that I thought I'd pick up. You're getting a ton of glare there because of the medal. Um and then I've got the, I think this is 99 Tops Finest, so it's still got the coating on it. But, yeah, iconic player. What I mean, what are you going to really say? I mean, 600, <laughs> 612 home runs. So Take that, I, Al. He's, yeah, he's in, he's in my lineup just based on that alone. Uh, seven, over 70 war. So that's, that's just a given. So, all right. All right. We are at second base. Yes, I'm going to flip the notes here in a minute here. So, um First base was the uh, he was the only one I looked at, so I didn't even have an honorable mention. Uh, I think second baseman, I'm I did the same thing, and I picked a couple, tried to pick a different, a couple different cards. So this is uh, Roberto Alomar. This is mm -hmm. 2005 tops. Uh, he's in a Tampa Bay uh, Rays uniform, and then I picked because I had the sets handy. You can see a couple. I've got a couple 2001s, but there's my 2001 uh, Roberto Alomar. Um, you know, 12 time All Star. Uh, you know, 300 career batting average, and I'm kind of doing this backwards, sorry. Uh, you know, just monster numbers, actually. 67 war. Uh, if I, you know, I mean, how do you go wrong? It's just a Hall of Fame, if I'm not mistaken, right? Mm -hmm. Hall of Fame. Yep. So, just a given. Uh, didn't do much thinking in the second base either. Yeah, I didn't either. Yep. yep. <laughs> that's, that's just a given. Um, but he was just really fun to watch play. Wasn't a great all around player too, and um, he had a reputation for being a jerk. But um, yes, he, I, you know, was he the, was, was he the spitter? 
Yeah, he did spit it on an umpire. Yeah, yeah, okay. I couldn't, yeah, okay. I could. I was going to say one of the all-time greatest spitters of all time. So. <laughs> I, I, I did a piece of art with him. Oh, and I had him sign it. Oh, he signed it? That's he signed fantastic. It. Yep. That is fantastic. Oh, there we go. And he couldn't have been a nicer guy. Yeah, right? I mean, you know what? Uh, the competitive edge can bring up the orneriness in all of us, maybe. Maybe he's really a nice guy, and he was just mm -hmm. competitive. That's how it works. So, And I thought it was cool that he played on the same team with his brother. That's Right. That's always fun. Very cool. And actually, I've, you know, I didn't even, I don't think I even had, no, I did have his brother as an honorable mentor for a catcher as well. So, um, but uh, yeah, that's pretty much a given. I think third base, uh, you're up for third base? Uh, third base. This one's, uh, this was a little tougher, I think. I thought so as well. I'm going with Mr. Really Calm. Oh, wow. Is that 33 Gaudi? Is a it's thirty three worldwide gum. Which worldwide is gum, okay. the same thing gotcha. as yeah, Canadian yeah, right, version. Right. Um, I paid eleven dollars for that card. That's fantastic. <laughs> that is awesome. <laughs> um, so no real stats that jump out at you. He had a two eighty one lifetime batting average, thirty five WAR. Um, but he was just a real solid third baseman. I, th I think he was. There was something in um, that book that everybody loves about the pre-war guys that the name escapes me. Um, I'm not familiar. Uh, that's going to bug me. <laughs> Why don't you go to your your, your third baseman and yes. I'll look that up. So based on just the quick stats that you gave me on him, uh, he <coughs> is much better than my third baseman, probably very sentimental from my end, and this is his 69 tops. Belton Bill Melton is our is my third baseman. So I picked out uh, this card and then to kind of represent him a little bit more because it's a sentimental kind of thing. This is my uh, 79 tops Bill Melton and my autographed ball from Bill Melton. So uh, nice. for years was an announcer for the White Sox. Uh, his numbers are not earth shattering by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, I think his war was under 20. Uh, the one thing that I do remember is he led the American League in home runs in 1971 with a whopping 33 home runs. And I think he tied that year with someone. And if I'm not mistaken, in the National League, there were five other players with more than 33 home runs. So so the American <laughs> League was definitely not belting the ball out you know, that much in 71. So he, he tied for first um, and kind of a sentimental pick. I, I got to meet him. Uh, he's called games for the White Sox for some time, so I figured, ah, I gotta throw him in there. So I think I lose. I think I lose at third base. <laughs> did you call him on the radio or TV? I did a little bit. Did a little both. Mostly, mostly oh. TV, but uh, did a little bit of both throughout throughout his career. I think he's since retired because I've heard or seen anything about him lately. So okay. Um, speaking of White Sox announcer announcers, um, what what do you think of Steve Stone? Uh, so Steve, Steve Stone's a part of Chicago in many ways. He, he's bounced from the Cubs to the Sox. Uh, a lot of people endear him in Chicago. They like him. Uh, he's been around for so long. I think if you're outside of the Chicago media, you might find him a tad bit arrogant. I think a lot of people find him to be a tad bit of a know-it-all and somewhat arrogant. Uh, I can look past that. Uh, I've had some friends who's actually had the opportunity to meet him and talk baseball with him and said he's a pretty nice guy and a know-it-all, but a mm. pretty nice guy. You know, I don't, you know, he had a pretty decent career. I think he won the Cy Young with the Orioles, didn't he? If I'm not, um, if I'm not mistaken, I think he did. Maybe? So uh, had a decent career, but he doesn't bother me that much. Um, I liked Jason Benetti, and I'm not really 100% certain what happened. We had him for four or five years. He's everywhere. He does uh, college football, college basketball, and he was doing socks. We hired him on, and now he just went to the Detroit, Detroit Tigers. And I'm not certain what happened there, a contract dispute or something, but I liked him a lot. So so when I'm watching games, sometimes I'll switch over to the other team's um, broadcast. Feed, right. And like I just can't get past Steve Stone. <laughs> it's a lot of people. A lot yeah. of people feel that way. 
particularly if you're not from Chicago, he comes off extremely arrogant, right? And I'm um, very much uh, a know it all. Maybe not so much arrogant for me, but more um, just so one sided and like uh, just, just a real homer. Which oh, yeah. I, I can I can look past some of that, but just he's like extremely that way. And it, I don't know. It just kind of bothers me a little bit. For years, uh, if, if you followed his career at all, as far as calling games, for years he was under Harry Carey. Mm-hmm. So you want to talk about the ultimate homer, but everybody <laughs> loved Harry Carey, right? It's the way you come off if you're going to be a homer. And Harry came off as the fun-loving, jovial guy who wanted to drink a beer with you. So, um, so yeah, he was second fiddle to Harry for many years with the Cubs. Um, and then I think uh, I think he was with the Sox first, went to the Cubs, and now he's back with the Sox, if I'm not mistaken. So. So that, that, that clears things up a little bit. <laughs> right, right, exactly. <laughs> All right, so we are at uh, shortstop then. We are at shortstop. Okay, who do, oh, okay. so is it on me? Uh, yeah, go ahead. Okay, so I didn't have a lot of cards. I uh, found one, not in either uniform, but uh, Omar Vizquel is who I chose. Um, I think it was pretty, uh, pretty simple selection when I started doing some of the research. Uh, mm-hmm. There was one honorable mention in my world, but, uh, uh, you know, he had a 40, 45 plus war, uh, four, over 400 stolen bases, uh, 272 batting average. Uh, and another guy you had mentioned earlier, he was fun to watch, in my opinion. I had a blast watching him. Absolutely. So, uh, yeah, that was my pick at uh, shortstop. And uh, I didn't dig up too many more cards other than that one of him. Um, yeah, you can't go wrong with Omar. He was, like you said, really fun to watch. Great, great defensive player. I went sentimental on this one. Um, first player I ever met. Yes. Julio Franco. Yes. So maybe a better bat than Omar. Yes, um, I agree. Defensively, Omar might be there. Uh, Julio was on my uh, overall. When I started, once I finished my lineup, I started rattling through players and I'm like, how is he not in here? And Julio Franco was one of them. Right. Uh, I didn't have a card, and it would have been a, it would have been strictly a sentimental pick. Was uh, uh, Chico Carrasco? Mm-hmm. I wanted to I wanted to pick him, but I don't have a card. And actually, almost bought his fifty five Bowman uh, two shows prior, and I don't know why I didn't pull the trigger. It was like five dollars. I should have bought it because then I probably would have picked him. But Omar was a better <laughs> was a better shortstop. It was right. sentimental, and like you said, Julio uh, definitely better bat, definitely. Hey, right, that puts us in the outfield, which I think was probably the toughest. Yeah, so I had to do some gymming around, and we we have a DH as well, right? Mm-hmm. So that helped a little bit, but I have a lot of honorable mentions for the outfield. <laughs> um, okay, so is it on me? Um, I doesn't matter. Okay, uh, uh, I'll go then first, and this yeah, is the only, uh, this one I thought was fairly easy. Shoeless mm-hmm. Joe. Uh, this is a 2021 Panini um, card that I have of his because obviously I don't have any playing days. I wish I did, but just uh, don't have the money for that right now. So right. maybe maybe Blue Jacket could have could have shown one of his. So, but uh, you know, obviously not in the Hall of Fame. Uh, lifetime 356 batting average, uh, 62 WAR, and almost 800 RBIs. So I just thought he was was a given. Had to be had to be part of that lineup. Um, and am I doing all three, or you want to switch off, or? Uh, yeah, let's do all three. Okay, so then my next guy, uh, the next two were actually fairly easy picks for me. It was who I was leaving out. So, and I've got a couple things representing this player. This is his 1960 tops, Mini Minoso, uh, and then this is his 1956 tops and a four. Uh, you know, uh, recent Hall of Famer, somewhat recent Hall of Famer. Uh, mm-hmm. Almost 300 career uh, batting average, 13-time All-Star, uh, 54 WAR roughly, um, over a thousand RBIs. Uh, I thought it'd be kind of cool. He's one of my favorite Sox players to collect. You know, if you're talking 50s, 60s vintage Sox players, it's Minnie, it's Nelly, and it's uh, Luis Aparicio. Um, but I thought it'd be kind of cool. I as I was digging for stuff, I found this uh, Major League Baseball stat book from 1952 which is considered his rookie year and he was in the back page so i figured that's pretty cool cool. 
Yeah, and it's it's a cool book. I didn't want to open it too much, but the cover's got Stan Musial on it. A little beat up, but just fun stuff. So I figured I'd show that as well to represent him as my second outfielder. And then um, this gentleman doesn't get uh, the credit he deserves for what he did for baseball. Larry Doby has to be there. Um, just uh, he may, maybe falls under the shadow a little bit of what Jackie did, but shortly after Jackie came Larry. And uh, again, I'm collecting the 1956 Hall of Famer, so that's why I have both of them uh, as 56 cards here. And this is a perfect card for you and I because he's wearing his Cleveland hat, but he's called out as a White Sox. So it doesn't get any more perfect for this episode than this card right here. Right. And again, great player, 288 batting average, uh, over 1,000 RBIs again, 56 war. Actually similar numbers to many, um, and a great player. And what he did for, for baseball in general, being the first African-American in the American League, that's huge. It's incredible. So, so I had to pick him. So I've, I've never brought myself to buy that card. I've almost bought that card many times, and I've never brought myself to buy it because it says White Sox on it. <laughs> like I need to let that go. Right. Well, now you could buy it, and it could be based around the fact that we did this episode. That'll be the memory then. <laughs> okay, okay. So I have um, one of my absolute favorite baseball cards. has all three of my guys on it. Absolutely. So I got Minnie and Larry and then Rocky Calavito in the middle there. Yes. Yes. So like it's it's hard to put Rocky over Joe Jackson, but um it, you know it's just this is for fun and it's a, a feeling thing. So Absolutely. That's that's my outfield. Because I, yeah, I gotta and, go with that card. And Rocky definitely, I mean, that's so perfect that you could do it in one card. Uh was definitely on my honorable mention. Mm -hmm. I had several outfielders. All right. So there's yeah. many. Yeah, beautiful. There's Larry. Gorgeous. Did you just get that or have you had that for a while? I got that at the national last year. Okay. That's a beautiful card. And there's Rocky. Fantastic. Fantastic. And then um, let's uh, rewind a little bit. It, uh, I was talking about Willie. Yes, yes. And uh, the book is Glory of Their Times, and it took okay. me that long to remember that. Um, have you read that? I have not. I'll have to okay. check it out. Um, you can read the book, or there's an audio book, which is like the actual recordings of, of these guys. They're, they're all like pre-war players, and they're talking about what baseball was like. before. It was like done in the 60s, I think. Okay. It's really, really good, and it's in the voice of the players. So it's there's so much cool stuff out there that mm -hmm. you can educate yourself on. And I actually, I was just watching another YouTuber, uh, Stephen with a PH, uh, mm -hmm. and he would just did a video recently talking about how he needs to educate himself. He went to Strongsville with us, then he went to Toronto, picked up some beautiful cards in Toronto, and also picked up four books. He said, "I want to educate myself," so he picked up four books along with cards to kind of educate himself. And I need to do the same. I really do. I I love that stuff. I can I can read that stuff all day long. It's the only thing that holds my attention are sports books. So, <laughs> <laughs> all right. So we're at uh, what DH? We're at DH. I'll let you. I'll let you go with that one. Okay. I'm going with Manny. Okay. Okay. Um. Just incredible, incredible numbers. He didn't need to use the PEDs. Like he was just. Not very bright. Right. So that's why he's not in the field. Right. So if he has to go to the bathroom during the game, it's not going to be a big deal. <laughs> that's, that's perfect. So uh, I'm going to do uh, the exact same thing. I went with Manny. Nice. So there's uh, 2005 tops, and then I don't even know what year this is. This is his rookie year. Mm -hmm. The 98, I think. 92. 92. Okay, 92. I'm terrible with the, the 90s. But um, I looked at his numbers. In my and we can start rattling off honorable mentions at this point. In my head, before I started doing research, my DH was going to be Albert Bell, and then I started and, and Manny was going to be in the outfield, and he wasn't a very good outfielder. No. And then I started rattling through all this. And I'm like, oh wait, 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 Manny's not even a good enough fielder. I have three quality fielders and Joe Jackson, Manny, and, and Larry, so I'll make him the DH. So Albert Bell was one of my honorable mentions who I kind of left off the list. Um, one of many, Julio Franco, who you had at shortstop, was another one. Mm -hmm. um, I did have a few. Uh, now there's, 
There's is anybody going to be mad that we left Harold Baines out? Uh, I, I'm going to get made fun of by certain people that I left Harold Baines out, <laughs> but I left him out. So I, I had to show it. Um, I give uh, Greg at Midlife Cards a uh, hard time because he ranks on Harold Baines, and I and I always tell him what a legend he is. My other guy who a lot of people don't like, Ron Kittle. He played right. for both teams as well. So I had to throw him in there as well. But, um, yeah. So I did uh, – I did see your four leaf uh, episode that you did when you guys did it, and it was awesome. Mm-hmm. Uh, my question is, did you pick out your manager? I did pick out a manager All right. because we could. All right, I'll um, let you go then. Okay, he won a pennant with both teams, Mr. Al Lopez. Pretty easy decision, I would yep. say, Mr. Al Lopez. Fifty-four and fifty-nine, right? From fifty-four with the fifty-one is fifty-three. Okay. Or his pennant was 54, yeah. 50, yeah, 54, and then uh, 59 with the Sox. Mm-hmm. Um, kind of broke up that Yankees run, right, of forever. Mm-hmm. So, so you can't – and I love his uh, I love his playing days cards, some of his playing days cards. Yeah, his, 38, his 38 Gaudi is a really good-looking card. His Diamond Stars, I, I want to pick a couple of those up as well. So I um, – a lot of the crossover in our teams is because of Bill Veck. Um, Absolutely. He, those, those were his guys. Um, yep. uh, Lopez, Chico Carasquel, um, uh, you know, Larry Doby, Mini Minoso. Yep. Very charismatic, very charismatic man. Um, mm-hmm. Maybe maybe in his younger days, he was more of an owner with Cleveland. I'm not as familiar. By the time he was with the Sox, he was a charismatic man and hokey, and he was part of putting Minnie Minoso out there every decade to make sure that he had that record. And he did some, you know, I think he owned minor league teams or his son did at some point. Yeah, time. Did. Mm-hmm. yeah they would do goofy things, uh, uh, put a shorter person in at the major leagues to try and, you know, shorten the strike zone and things of that nature. Um, there is a uh, local restaurant here that I frequent quite a bit in downtown Chicago. It's called Miller's Pub. And uh, last time I was there, I never noticed it until I started actually doing YouTube videos. There's a whole wall on, on Bill Vec. So uh, next time I'm there, I'll take a picture and I'll send it to you. I'll have uh, to check that out. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's right in downtown Chicago. If, if the Nash, well, the National is here after Cleveland and we all get together, we'll, we should take a trip down there and go do lunch and we can check it out. It's mm-hmm. very cool. Yeah, he, he was charismatic here too. Uh, okay. He ended up selling the team because of his divorce and um, also like he won a pennant and it was kind of like, you know, I, I took this team and I built it up and I got to the top and I want to do that again. I don't want to just like sit on my laurels. So that's, that was part of his, the joy of it for him. Sure. Sure. Um, and I think if his son, does his son still own minor? I think they're still involved with the minor league, if I'm I not mistaken. I believe so. There's a really, really excellent documentary on Netflix, and I don't remember the name of it. Um, I can look that up real quick. Oh, yeah, that'd be awesome. I'll, I'll check that out as, as soon as we're done here. I'll it is <laughs> yeah, definitely worth watching, uh, Mike. That documentary it is um, The Saint of Second Chances is what it's called. Okay. So it starts out with the the disco night, right? Night, how that kind of like ruined his career, and then he built his career back up, um, sure. building minor league teams, and yeah, really, really good. I forgot about that. That's that's the one thing the Sox are known for, right? Disco demolition. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Goodness, uh, they were not a good team back then. Surely they're after they turned it around. That was seventy. Was that seventy nine? Disco demolition, seventy nine or eighty? That era, yeah. Yeah, and then eighty three was winning ugly for them when I kind of really spent, kind of jumped on board with the Sox at that point. So, but uh, yeah, I think we were pretty close. We're pretty similar. Yeah, for the most part, we didn't no, wait no for big surprises much. there. No, I think you beat me at third base. I think you got me there. I was too sentimental with Belton Bill. <laughs> <It's> all right, <laughs> you got to do that occasionally. Exactly right. Yeah, but you got Joe Jackson on your team, and yeah, I had to, I had to sneak him in there, right? When once you hit baseball reference, that's the first name that you know. If you type in who played with both of these teams, he's, he's the first name that mm-hmm. pops up. So I almost didn't make it. I, I had to dig for his card. I said, I know I have one, <laughs> so I had to dig for it to find it. Yeah, I'm sure I have like Conlon cards or something somewhere, right? But... <laughs> 
Well, that's fantastic. This was a lot of fun. It was an absolute blast, Scott. I always enjoy doing this, and uh, I want to see more of these. Uh, this is not a VR or anything, but like, um, if you want to do this with me or if you want to do this with Jason, I'm sure he'd be happy to do this with you. Um, or if you want to do like Yankees, Red Sox, um, somebody should do that. And um, let's, let's bring this back. Yes, I agree. If anyone calls me up, I'll be the first one to jump on. Mm -hmm. I am also a Cardinals fan, so I can switch to the Cardinals if I there have to go. as well. So, um, but yeah, Yankees, Red Sox, yeah, that'd be a ridiculous lineup. That'd be insane. Mm -hmm. It'd be who you're leaving off of that team. That's what that would be. Right. But yeah, again, I appreciate it. I think it's an awesome idea, and and you did it a couple times, but it's been a while, correct? Yeah, it has been a while. Yeah, it kind of like escaped me, and then we were talking a little bit, and I'm like, you know what, I want to do that again, and. Uh, I think White Sox is just there's there's that that outfield is salivating, right? Absolutely, and there's enough there's enough history with most of these teams that anyone you follow you could you could put together a team that's just phenomenal. Actually, I might pretend I'm a I'm a fan of other teams just to do it. I'm an Orioles fan, <laughs> so just to, just to jump on. So, but that's awesome. All right, man. Well, uh, I think that's it for now. Uh, thanks for hopping on with me, Jason. I had a lot of fun with this, and uh, we will see you. Yes, thank you very much for having me, Scott. I appreciate it, and uh, anytime you want me to jump on, I'd be thrilled to. So, again, thanks thanks for having me, and uh, we'll talk to everybody soon, I'm sure. All right. All righty. Bye-bye.